I have been using OpenSUSE now for over 200 days, and if you've watched my channel for any amount of time during those 200 plus days, you've no doubt heard me talk about how awesome OpenSUSE is. Over and over and over and over again, I've talked about how much I've fallen in love with OpenSUSE. I've shown off my sticker, which is there once again. You guys can tell that I've become a bit of a fanboy when it comes to OpenSUSE. I think it's a fantastic Linux distribution, and I've even called it the best Linux distribution out there. I, I've made fun of other people who don't use OpenSUSE, although I don't really care what you use. I just like trolling people because it's fun. Overall, OpenSUSE is a fantastic distribution, and I've talked about it over and over again. I've sung its praises, become a fanboy, all of those things, but... You've never heard me talk about it as a perfect distribution. I've never called it perfect. I never will because there's not a perfect distribution that exists. There's just not one out there that is perfect. And OpenSUSE is not an exception to that rule. OpenSUSE has flaws. What I want to do today is talk about one of its major flaws, maybe its biggest flaw, and that is Zipper. So let's talk about that. But before we do, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because it would help the channel and it would mean you get more awesome Linux content like this. Hashtag YouTuber. Anyway, I don't know why I do the hashtag YouTuber every time. It doesn't matter. Anyways, Zipper is the package manager for OpenSUSE. If you've ever used OpenSUSE before, think of it like apt or Pac-Man or DNF. It's basically the equivalent of that, but on OpenSUSE. And compared to those other package managers, I would say that Zipper is a very good package manager. It has the vast majority of features all of those other package managers have, and it has very good syntax. It has a ton of really cool features in terms of searching and abbreviations that you can use so you don't have to you know, spell out the entire command all the time. It does very good. I would say that it's better in some ways than Pac-Man. Pac-Man used to be my favorite package manager, but Pac-Man is not an intuitive package manager because they use really weird flags and stuff like that that you don't know what they mean and all that stuff, and it takes some while to get used to. Zipper is not like that. It uses very standard syntax, things like search and install and stuff like that, very similar to apt or DNF in, in that case. So I would say Zipper is a very good package manager, but I, as I said, I also think that it's OpenSUSE's biggest flaw. Why would I say that? It's because it's slow. Zipper is a very, very slow package manager. Compared to all the others, it's the, by far the slowest. It's not even really a competition. Now, when you talk about slowness, you have to think about what do you mean slow, Matt? What, what, do, you, what do you mean when you say that it's slow? Well, Zipper is slow in two areas. First is mirrors. So Zipper is slow when it comes to the usage of OpenSUSE's mirrors. Now, this may be a Zipper problem or it's a mirror problem. I'm going to lean towards the latter. Now, OpenSUSE as an organization does have a lot of mirrors scattered around the world. Maybe not as many as Arch or Debian or whatever, but they have a lot of mirrors scattered around the world. So you can find mirrors that are close to you, chances are. But it doesn't matter how close you are to a mirror, it's still going to be slow. Now, I don't know if this has to do again with Zipper or it has to do with the fact that they have really slow internet at all of their mirror sites, or if there's some kind of efficiency thing that they got going on where it just doesn't actually send data out as fast as it possibly could, the mirrors are slow. And you'll know this every time you go into your OpenSUSE install and do a refresh. So I have this alias to RE, and it's going to ask me for my password, and you guys can just see how slow it is to actually re, you know, refresh the mirrors. So this is the equivalent of doing apt update on Ubuntu or Debian, things like that, or basically you can do that on Fedora as well. This is basically doing the same thing. And the problem, one of the problems with this process here, and this is actually going a little bit faster than normal, is that over time, as you use OpenSUSE more and more, you're going to be adding more and more repositories, which means this process here actually gets slower the longer you use OpenSUSE because it has more repositories to actually use. Now, there are a few things you can do to speed this up. You can use things like Mirror Sourcer to actually speed this up, but overall, that process is fairly slow. And on, honestly, like I said, this time, because of course I'm recording it and it knew I was watching, it went faster than it normally does. But this process here is slow and it's because the mirrors themselves are slow, I believe. I don't think it has much to do with Zipper itself, but you see this every time you use Zipper. And the biggest issue here 
in terms of mirrors isn't that they're slow, which is a it was is an issue, but I don't think it's the biggest one. The biggest one is that zipper constantly refreshes these things and not always when it has to. So things like if you just wanted to do a search for a package of some sort using zipper search, it would want you to refresh the mirrors before you were actually able to do the search. The odd thing there is that it doesn't actually refresh the mirrors for you. It tells you to go do it separately, but it still goes through all of the mirrors. It's very weird in that situation, but you get the idea. Every time it asks you to refresh those mirrors, it takes times and it does that often. Like for every zipper command, basically, it's going to tell you, especially if it has to interact with those mirrors in any way, it's going to tell you that it needs to be refreshed. And it has to do this multiple times a day. And that slows Zipper down quite a bit. But it's not the biggest area where Zipper is slow. Earlier I mentioned there was two areas where Zipper was slow. The second one is when it comes to downloading the packages themselves. So if you're going to download something from Zipper and you know, or you're performing an update, you're going to notice the one thing that it doesn't do is parallel downloads. Zipper doesn't have the ability to do parallel downloads. It hasn't ever had that uh, that capability as far as I'm aware and it doesn't have it right now for sure they have been working on it which is good news the bad news is that they've been working on it since 2016 now I'm no math whiz but 2016 was a fair bit of time ago and that's a little bit worrying if you're looking forward to this feature because I don't think that it's ever going to come now there are some side projects people trying to rewrite zipper completely you know, either in Rust or in other languages to try to make it faster, to enable parallel downloads and other cool features. But those projects are all usually done by one person. Some of them are maintained, some of them are not maintained. Most, if not all of them, are unfinished. So all of our hopes and eggs are in one basket when it comes to trying to get this feature. Because it needs this feature. Parallel downloads are important. Just ask the Arch guys. So for the longest time, Pac-Man did not have parallel downloads and then it did once they received parallel downloads as a feature and they enable it everyone who used arch was wondering why they didn't have that to begin with it was a very good feature for them to add you can basically download as many packages as you want as many packages as your internet will be able to handle and it makes pac-man just tremendously faster because it can download many packages at once it's a very good feature but zipper doesn't have it and that means that it downloads them one by one by one and it can only start the next one once the last one has been finished and it makes zipper phenomenally slow when it comes to downloading packages and on top of that it's also slow and i didn't really i didn't mention this as a third part but it's also slow when installing packages so i don't think that that's unique to zipper most package managers are the slowest when it comes to actually installing the packages but when you add it on top of the mirrors being slow so it refreshes all the mirrors when you do an update so it will do that it will do that slowly when it downloads them it will download them one at a time and it'll do that slowly because again the mirrors are slow and then it's slow to install them so it's a triple whammy it's a very very slow package manager so this is by far the biggest flaw of OpenSUSE. It's not even a argument, in my opinion. I think that you could ask any OpenSUSE user out there, no matter how long they've been using OpenSUSE, and they'd all tell you that the biggest flaw is probably Zipper. And it's a shame, because like I said, I think that overall it's a good package manager. It just has this one huge humongous flaw that ruins everything. So there are solutions to this problem all obviously the main one being that they finally add parallel downloads to zipper and they make it work now i've heard that they're basically rewriting zipper from the bottom up and that's what's taking so long i don't know if they're continuing to work on that project or if it's just something that they work on from time to time or if they've completely abandoned the idea of fixing it i don't know what's going on there i've read there's a whole thread on the zipper github or the get zipper git page where they basically talked about this feature for forever, basically since 2016. So I don't know what the actual status of it is right now. I'm hoping that eventually that it will come, hopefully sometime within the next two years while I'm still using OpenSUSE. But I wouldn't hold my breath that that's going to be the solution. It's the solution that should happen. It's the one that we should definitely hope should happen. But because it's been worked on for so long, 
I don't think that it's either ever going to happen or, or it's going to happen anytime soon. Unfortunately, I think that that's just the case. The other options for this is if you want to fix it now is to use something like DNF. And you can, in fact, install DNF and use DNF, which is Fedora's package manager, on OpenSUSE because both Fedora and OpenSUSE are RPM-based distributions, so you can use the same package manager on both if you want. I'm sure, you probably can use Zipper on, on Fedora. I don't know why you'd want to, but you probably could. Uh, for sure, you can use DNF on OpenSUSE. It's not even all that hard. It's just a couple commands. You install DNF, you install DNF plugins, and it just basically works. Uh, there are instructions on the OpenSUSE wiki, so if you wanted to find that out how to do that, you can find it out easily. Basically, what it does, though, is it allows you to use DNF, and DNF, of course, supports parallel downloads. Now, DNF itself is not the fastest package manager in the world. It's probably one of the slowest. In fact, I'd say if you were ranking the slowest package managers out there, Zipper is obviously number one. DNF is probably number two, at least DNF four right so using dnf isn't going to save the world it's not going to speed up your your updates and installs so much that you know you're going to save all this time but it is definitely faster than zipper you can also however install dnf5 now dnf5 is not a finished project it's not actually released to the the wider fedora world but you can install it on OpenSUSE and you can use it on OpenSUSE. now i have been doing this now for a couple days i've i used dnf before that before i installed dnf5 and it is phenomenally faster it's just insane so yesterday i wish i had recorded this because it would have just kind of been really good b-roll for this video but yesterday i had 547 updates when i did an update on my system if i were to have used zipper to do that like i normally would if i use sudo zipper depth to actually do a system update it probably would have taken close to 30 minutes maybe 35 minutes to actually do that it would have refreshed the mirrors it would have downloaded all the packages one by one by one and then it would have installed them and ran all the post installation scripts and all the stuff that it would normally do it would have taken about again about 30 to 35 minutes with dnf5 it took less than five that's the difference right so if you're going if you're using OpenSUSE, i highly recommend using dnf5 as the package manager but and here's a big one you're gonna have to listen to me on this if you're going to do this make sure you pay attention to everything that's going on you're going to want to watch those updates because dnf is not the package manager of OpenSUSE. It's just not, and it doesn't have the built-in compatibility with all the stuff that OpenSUSE does, like Zipper does, because Zipper is the package manager and it has all the stuff. So the thing that I've found the most is that oftentimes when you use Zipper, you get errors when it comes to things like packages changing to different mirrors and all this stuff, things that you would have to interact with in order to fix those errors. Usually it's not that big a deal. Usually it's just approving the idea that you know a package moves from this mirror to this mirror or from this repository to that repository whatever with dnf it just ignores all those errors it just goes right through them and i'm assuming it doesn't tell you i'm assuming that it just ha it encounters those choices and, and it makes the choice for you whatever choice it considers best right there is an option to do that in zipper as well so i'm assuming that they've just kind of correlated that option in zipper which is allow vendor change into dnf so that it kind of makes those choices for you that's fine but it worries me just a little bit because i want to make those choices myself for the most part i want to have some control over that to make sure i know where packages are going and if they're going to not be installed or if they're going to break things i want that choice so there are some downsides to using dnf and dnf5 on OpenSUSE. i don't know if those downsides will be ugly as i go forward using them or not i haven't used it for long enough to be able to tell you for sure but the speed i think is going to be worth it because it is so much faster so i made this argument on mastodon the other day where i talked about how i think that open should can seriously consider just using dnf as their package manager now this is a hot take, as you would say it, in the OpenSUSE sphere. Because a lot of people like Zipper. I'm one of those people who like Zipper. I like that it has that OpenSUSE has its own package manager. I think it should. That way it doesn't rely on the Fedora project or Red Hat or whatever for their package manager. I think that that'd probably be a bad thing. But when it comes to speed and usability, DNF is superior to Zipper in almost every fashion. And 
because of that, I'm very jealous of it. And I've thought over and over again well, how nice OpenSUSE would be if it just used DNF as its default package manager. And I argued about this on Mastodon for a little while. And I've come down to the idea is that I do think that it's something that they can should consider in the long term. But I don't think that they should go that way, to be honest with you, even though I think that it's something that they should talk about. And the reason I think they should talk about it, because I think it would spur conversation over how bad Zipper actually is in terms of speed. I, I think that that's a conversation that OpenSUSE actually needs to have because it's something it's something that everyone experiences. It makes Yast really, really slow because Yast is just a front end and uses Zipper for a lot of the things that Yast does. And if you've ever used Yast before, you'll know that in certain situations, it is phenomenally slow. And the reason why it's phenomenally slow is because Zipper is laying in the back end being really, really slow. So I think that this is a conversation that the OpenSUSE community needs to have because it needs to be fixed. Now, I don't think that it is a priority for the developers of OpenSUSE, unfortunately. And one of the reasons why is because they have their focus set on other things. If you go to the OpenSUSE website, you'll see that they have approximately eight different distros that they actually support. They have Leap and Tumbleweed, and they have two or three remutable distros, and they have several other ones that they ha that are different flavors of those distributions that exist. They have many different ISOs that they have to maintain every time they do an update. And I've talked about this before with other distros, you know, Arco Linux and Linux Mint and several others that just kind of seem to have a situation where they're dividing their focus into too many different places. And I think that OpenSUSE has done this. They have, unfortunately, they, ha they have divided their focus into too many different areas when it comes to pr providing different distributions. And they're basically providing many different distributions that have different release schedules, different support schedules, different layouts and package managers and all that stuff. Because some of their immutable stuff don't use Zipper at all. They use something different, you know, you know, so they have all that stuff to maintain. And Zipper's kind of the old thing. So it's not getting the attention that it, you know, likely would if it was the only thing. And I think that that's kind of the situation we find ourselves in is the OpenSUSE developers have turned their attention to the new shiny stuff and Zipper is going to just languish in the background. It's why the parallel download things just kind of hasn't happened. Or, you know, maybe they just have one or two people working on it. Whereas before, you know, if they didn't have all of these separate projects, they could dedicate some of the stuff to making what they already have better and faster. This is my problem with OpenSUSE in a nutshell is that they have the same kind of problem that Arco Linux has, that Linux Mint has, that Manjaro has in some ways, where instead of focusing on just one ISO, one distribution that they can just kind of push out and perfect as much as possible, they've divided their attention into too many different places. And that means that their distros that are overall very good do suffer in some areas and with OpenSUSE that area is with their package manager it's just the place where it suffers the most because the rest of it is really good I really I, I can't talk enough about how stable this distribution has been it's a rolling release distro and it should it has no business being as stable as it has been and it, it's just been phenomenally good when it comes to stability and it's in breakability unbreakability uh I don't, the word there just completely, completely flew over my head. I'm sure inbreakability is not actually a word, but it should be a word. In my inability to break it, it, it has completely surprised me because I do weird things on my system all the time. Like the other day, I, I uninstalled Plasma. And when you uninstall Plasma, it tends to take a lot of stuff with it. OpenSUSE handled that like a dream. It even changed to a different display manager by itself without telling me I had to do it because it uninstalled SDDM because of course it did and it just switched it and on any other distribution you uninstall SDDM because you uninstalled Plasma and you didn't realize you want to uninstall SDDM it's just going to take you to a TTY no other distribution that I know of at least will just do that for you that's awesome OpenSUSE does this kind of stuff where it is kind of, if you make a mistake or you do something really weird, it kind of covers it up and tries to fix it for you. Now, obviously it's not perfect. There have been situations where I've done stupid shit 
and I've had to roll back for whatever reason using a Butterfest snapshot. But it's overall been fantastic, and it disappoints me constantly that it feels like the main product of OpenSUSE, which should be Tumbleweed, has kind of fallen by the wayside in some cases, specifically when it comes to package management. And, it, you know, it's just one of those things that I have to kind of live with. And it's fine, but I'm just kind of disappointed. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed, is the way I should, I should put it. I'm, I am glad that DNF 5 and DNF are available on OpenSUSE and that you can use them. It's a good workaround. Like I said, I don't know how stable that's going to be long term, but I'm happy that those things exist to kind of cover up the fact that Zipper is probably going to be slow for ever and ever, which is just, again, very disappointing. So that's the biggest flaw with OpenSUSE. In the next few days, I'm going to be talking about the five things I like most about OpenSUSE. I don't know when that video will actually go up, but I'm going to record that video very soon. So uh, that'll be something to look forward to. If you are interested in that kind of thing, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe and all that stuff. So you can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. You can also support me on Ko-fi and on YouTube with the little join button down there if you want to help support me monetarily. If you want to get something back for your money, I do have a store where you can get some awesome merch. You can go there at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find desk mats and hats and hoodies and t-shirts and there's a, there's a poster kind of like the one behind me, although without the, without the subscribe button on, on it. So if you want to get some merch and support the channel, you can do that. Shop at thelinkscast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, again, do appreciate it so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and week or weekend or wherever I actually post this video. And I'll see you next time.